All right, what about the other 13 leading causes of death? <clears throat> Let's do it. The top three killers used to be heart disease, cancer, stroke. Oh, that's so 2007. Now, it's heart disease, cancer, and COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases like emphysema. Thankfully, COPD can be prevented with the help of a plant-based diet, even treated with plants, improving lung function over time. Of course, the tobacco industry view these landmark findings a little differently. If adding plants to one's diet can help one's lung function, I mean, wouldn't it be easier to just add plants to cigarettes? Oh, and indeed, oh, let's go back. The addition of acai berries to cigarettes evidently has a protective effect against emphysema in smoking mice. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Next, they're going to start putting berries in meat. And indeed, I couldn't make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. The addition, the addition of, uh, of uh, fruit extracts to burger patties was not without its, um, its uh, glitches. For example, the blackberries dyed the burger patties with this distinct purplish color, kind of <laughs> turned people off. Although, evidently, you can improve the tenderness of lamb carcasses by infusing them before rigor mortis sets in with kiwi fruit juice. You can even improve the nutritional profile of frankfurters by adding powdered grape seeds, though there were complaints that grape seed particles became visible in the final product. And look, I mean, if, we, if there's one thing we know about hot dog eaters, it's that they're picky about what goes in their food. <laughs> oh, oh, pig anus, okay, but grape seeds, ew. <laughs> Strokes are killer number four. Preventing strokes may be all about eating potassium-rich foods, yet most Americans don't even reach the recommended minimum daily intake. And by most, I mean more than 98%. 98% of us eat potassium-deficient diets because 98% of us don't eat enough plants. Potassium comes from the word pot ash. Take any plant, put it in a pot, uh, reduce it to ash, you're left with pot ashium, potassium, the so-called vegetable alkali, true story. But who can name me one plant in particular, a plant food high in potassium? Bananas. Bananas, right? I don't know why, every, it's like the one thing everybody knows about nutrition. I, I think like Chiquita must have had this great PR firm or something. But it turns out bananas don't even make the top 50 um, sources. Uh, coming in, let me see, coming in at number 86, right after fast food vanilla milkshakes. It goes fast food vanilla milkshakes and then bananas. You know, it's funny, when I, when I was uh, writing the book, I wanted to go back and make sure that they didn't update their list, and they had. Turns out now bananas don't even make the top thousand sources coming in at 1,611 right after Reese's Pieces. I kid you not. <laughs> the most concentrated whole food sources of uh, potassium in the American diet are beans and greens and dates of all three things. Um, uh, bananas don't even make the top thousand. In fact, if you look at the next leading cause of death, bananas could be downright dangerous. It's a... <laughs> Alzheimer's disease. Our sixth leading killer now striking a staggering four million Americans affected. You know, 20 years ago, it wasn't even in the top 10. According to the latest dietary guidelines for the prevention of Alzheimer's, the two most important things we can do, cut down our consumption of meat, dairy, and junk, and replace those with vegetables, beans, fruits, and whole grains. This is based in part on data going back 20 years now. Those that eat meat, red meat, white meat, doesn't matter, between two to three times, um, the risk of becoming demented later in life, and the longer one eats healthy, the lower the risk of dementia drops. 
Next on the list is type 2 diabetes, which we can prevent, arrest, and reverse with a plant-based diet, something we've known since back in the 1930s. Within five years, about a quarter of the diabetics were able to get off insulin, but you know, plant-based diets are relatively low calorie diets. So look, maybe their diabetes just got better because they lost so much weight. Right? To tease that out, what one would have to do is design a study where you put people on a healthy diet, but force them to eat so much food that they wouldn't lose weight despite eating healthier. Um, then we could see if a plant-based diet has you know, particular benefits, unique benefits beyond just all the weight loss. Right? Well, we'd have to wait 44 years, but here it is. Subjects were weighed every day. If they started losing weight, they were made to eat more food. In fact, so much food, some of the uh, some of the participants had problems eating and all. They're like, oh no, not another tostada. Oh, <laughs> not another salad. Um, but they mentioned that so no significant alterations in body weight, despite restricting meat, dairy, eggs, and junk. So with zero weight loss, did the plant-based diet still help? Well, overall, insulin requirements were cut about 60% and half were able to get off insulin altogether, despite no change in weight. How many years did this take? No, 16 days. So we're talking diabetics who've had diabetes for as long as 20 years, injecting 20 units of insulin a day, and then as few as 13 days later off of all insulin altogether, thanks to less than two weeks on a plant-based diet. Diabetes for 20 years, off all insulin in two weeks. Diabetes for 20 years because no one had told them about a plant-based diet. Here's patient 15, 32 units of insulin on the control diet, and then 18 days later, on none. Lower blood sugars on 32 units less insulin. That's the power of plants. And as a bonus, their cholesterol dropped like a rock to under 150 in just 16 days. You know, just like moderate changes in diet, you only get moderate changes in cholesterol. How moderate do you want your diabetes? Everything in moderation is a truer statement than many people realize, right? Uh, you know, moderate changes in diet, in, uh, in diet can leave diabetics with, you know, moderate vision loss, you know, moderate kidney failure, moderate amputation, maybe just a few toes or something. You know? <laughs> Moderation in all things is not necessarily a good thing. You know that study that purported to show that meat, that uh, diets high in meat, eggs, and dairy could be the harmful health of smoking supposedly suggested that people who eat lots of animal protein have four times more likely to die from, uh, from uh, cancer or diabetes. If you look at the actual study, you'll see that's not true. Those eating lots of animal protein didn't have four times more likely uh, risk of dying from diabetes. They had 73 times higher risk of dying from diabetes. Now those who chose moderation, eating a moderate amount of animal protein, they only had 23 times the risk of death from diabetes. Killer number eight is kidney failure, which can be both prevented and treated with a plant-based diet, and no surprise. Kidneys are highly vascular organs, Harvard researchers found three dietary risk factors for declining kidney function. Number one, animal protein. Number two, animal fat. And number three, cholesterol. All, of course, only found in one kind of food. Animal fat can alter the actual structure of our kidneys based on studies like this showing plugs of fat uh, literally clogging up the works in autopsied kidneys. Um, and the animal protein can have a profound effect on normal kidney function, inducing what's called hyperfiltration, increasing the workload on the kidney, but not plant protein. Right? Eat some uh, tuna fish, and you can see increased pressure on the kidneys one, two, three hours after the meal. Shoots right up. Right? But if instead of having a 
tuna fish salad sandwich, you had a tofu salad sandwich with the exact same amount of protein, no effect. Right? Kidneys can deal with plant protein without even batting an eyelash. So what are you saying? Why does animal protein cause that overload reaction but not plant protein? It appears to be due to the inflammation triggered by the animal protein. How do we know that? It's because if you give a powerful anti-inflammatory drug along with the tuna fish, you can actually abolish that hyperfiltration effect, that protein leakage effect in response to meat ingestion. Then, of course, there's the acid load. Animal protein induces the formation of acid within the kidney, which can then lead to what's called tubular toxicity, damage to the delicate urine-making tubes within the kidney. Animal foods tend to be acid-forming, whereas plant foods tend to either be neutral or actually alkaline, actually base-forming, um, to counteract some of that acid. So the solution to uh, stopping the progression of chronic kidney disease may lie in the produce market, produce aisle rather than the pharmacy aisle. No wonder plant-based diets have been used to treat kidney failure for decades now. Here's protein leakage on the traditional low-sodium diet that physicians would normally put these patients on. Switch to a supplemented vegan diet, conventional, plant-based, conventional, plant-based, turning on and off kidney dysfunction like a light switch based on what's going into their mouths. Killer number nine, respiratory infections. What 